We asked them to make the ultimate sacrifice, but despite their selfless actions, more than 37,000 U.S. veterans are homeless. Gregory Cook was one of those vets. Today, Gregory is in a much better place, and he's experiencing what I like to call manifest destiny. But before we show you the life-altering surprise that DBL helped make possible, here's Gregory's very personal journey. Gregory. Gregory, it is really an honor to be sitting here with you today. I know that you've had a very full but complicated life, and I just want to learn a little bit more about you. My father was in the military, so I was born in uh, Germany. What age were you when you got to California? About four. Fast forward nine years, and you're 13 years old, right. and your parents make the decision to put you in foster care. Well, actually, it was more uh, my dad and mom got divorced when I was seven. And my mom, she had a hard time with us, and me especially. I didn't really try to give her trouble, but we just didn't see eye to eye a lot. Police were over at a house every time, and my mom would tell them a story, and then I would get in trouble. Sometimes they would uh, take me. They didn't have a child shelter back then, so it took me to a detox. So I would have to deal with a bunch of angry, drunk people, which wasn't good because my father had been a drinker when I was young. I had to go to the emergency room, and after that, I became a foster kid. But you made a decision to join the military, which is interesting for a few reasons. One, it's very honorable for you to give your service to your country, but you also chose discipline. Why did you choose to enter the military, and why the Navy? I haven't protected my brothers from my parents. I was a scrawny kid, and I didn't like to fight. I wasn't very good at fighting. But I'd still stand up a bully even though I got my butt kicked. Just to show them that not everyone's just gonna lay down in front of you, boy. The Navy had the best for medical and dental, and they had the highest standards for the military. So when I was in boot camp, I worked really hard and I was an honorman. So that's how that started, and uh, I did enjoy it. It was something I hadn't been exposed to before. At some point, you found yourself homeless. Right. Um, although you were working over 60 hours a week, driving for a rideshare service. You found yourself living in your car. Right. What was that like? It was tough the first uh, first few weeks, and I remember a couple times crying. And uh, when I, I went to England, I worked over there, I came back to take care of my dad. And then I had a long-term employment with a quasi-government facility, and uh, it was really rough. I had a lot of depression and a lot of anxiety about that, and that's what kind of led me for, to being homeless. I couldn't go back to that place because it was just so dark. After three weeks, you know, I realized that this is where I'm at. I could choose the fold, or I could put my best foot forward and push as hard as I could. I did that, I did that for two years, and uh, at one point I got an accident and that was the end. At that point, I was truly homeless because now I didn't have a means to support myself. Uh, I didn't have a place to sleep. And then after that, I was walking the streets. What do you want people to know about people who land in your situation where you're working, but you still find yourself homeless, especially with all the stigma surrounding homelessness? People are people. And just because someone's homeless doesn't mean that they're any less worthwhile. Some of the best people I knew, people who were the most helpful, the most kind, were people who were just like me who were homeless. So I love a good comeback. <laughs> and I like to say everyone's deserving of the comeback that they're willing to earn. My dad and my mom, were, they were not nice. I never want to be anything like my parents. So when things got bad, I never turned to drugs. I never did alcohol. It's the decision that you make every day about what kind of person you're going to be. That is what makes and breaks somebody. So it's not just your friends who are going to be touched by your story. It's so many of our DBL Nation who are going to see themselves in you. and be optimistic about their opportunity for another chance. My advice is believe. Believe in yourself. Believe in God. Have faith. And walk the line. So don't tell me that miracles don't happen. Because they do. And I'm a living testament to that. And what you're talking about is manifest destiny. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you.
You just saw the story of Gregory Cook, a Navy veteran who, despite all his hardships, keeps a positive outlook on life. And that's why he is a perfect candidate for Project Spark. It's a nonprofit organization that gives deserving veterans a car. And DBL was part of this amazing surprise. Take a look. You know this is one of my absolute favorite days. We are in Redwood City, California, and Gregory is going to receive a car. The Midas guys have been working around the clock and the team is putting in the last minute touches right now. This is so exciting. Today we have a great car to give away. It's a Honda Accord. The Midas technicians have been working really hard to fix this car for Gregory. Project Spark is a national initiative brought together by Midas, 1-800-CHARITY-CARS, um, in order to help veterans, families, and first responders uh, just get people back on the road. Gregory, I am really honored to be with you today. I know that you're a veteran, and we thank you for your service. We know things aren't always easy for you, but we want to do something to make your life just a little bit easier. So on behalf of Midas, Project Spark, 1-800-CHARITY-CARS, and Daily Blast Live, we would like to present you with this vehicle that has been restored just for you. I like it. I love, I love Hondas. It's even my size. Look at this. This is cool. This is awesome. I love it. This is great. It's How does this right feel? Here. Feels good. Feels home. But yeah, this is definitely what I needed, what I want. That's awesome. That's awesome. You got all your bells and whistles, so. Yeah. No stone unturned. This no, is great. This is wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Fun Let's hit the, the highway. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> the world is yours. That's it. Santa Cruz is just a stone throw away, right? All right. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. A very special thanks to Midas, Project Spark, and 1-800-CHARITY-CARS. To learn how you can help, visit GoProjectSpark.com. Well done, Erica. He is just the fact that, of course, he's a veteran and he deserves all of our respect and appreciation, and I'm glad we could give him this car, but the fact that he did not follow in his parents' vices and pattern, yes. which is so hard to do, and he became the exact opposite, which is like a completely empathetic, clean individual. Uh, what stood out to you about him? It seemed like he was so, I asked him at one point, like, when are you going to prioritize yourself? Because when he was um, let go from his position that he went overseas to take, and it ended up being a temporary position, he came back to take care of his father, who never took care of him. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so many things happened after that um, that landed him on really hard times, but he was always working. He was always contributing to society, and it just wasn't enough for him to actually get his own home and have a place. Did he say he's going to start taking care of himself? He did. Yay. Yes, and he's doing, he's doing much better. Good. So Same now there. he has his wheels, and he's able to do anything he needs to do in order Amen. to Amen. Well done, DBL. Nice well job. done, Erica. Nice